Uh, thanks indeed for staying with us. The program is this morning on ITV, broadcasting from your Tarlin station, independent television. We are located at the hilltop of Umpape Hills in the nation's capital city, Abuja. In the past uh, few weeks, let's say about two or three weeks, the federal capital territory has been battling with the outbreak of uh, cholera. Some persons have passed on with the FCT uh, minister and minister of state saying that they are doing enough to ensure that they contain this issuing warning to persons to be very careful where they get their water from and also the issue of open defecation which is still a growing problem in sub-saharan africa with many persons saying that open defecation is still at a very high rate uh, within the country and even within its neighbor in the west african sub-region here and since then they have been intense reports they have been intense advocacy there have been the need for persons to synergize, and the issue of treatment is also uh, much uh, talked about here. So uh, this morning we will be discussing with the acting uh, director of the Public uh, Health uh, Department of the Federal Capital Territory Administration, precisely under the Health and Human Services uh, Secretariat, Dr. Sadiq uh, Abdurrahman. Uh, we'll be asking him about the about the outbreak of cholera in the FCT. We're looking at the matters arising, issues relating uh, to the outbreak of cholera. The number is worrisome, is disturbing here, but they are saying that the FCTA is doing so much, uh, so much. We'll be finding out from him what is being done because we know that some persons uh, get their drinking water from the stream. Some persons as well pass out feces uh, well in open places when the rain falls. It washes everything into the stream where persons collect to drink and the other misconception over time that a flowing stream hardly gets dirty have proven to be very very wrong here because uh, of the outbreak of the uh, cholera can i say pandemic now mm -hmm. cholera outbreak of cholera when you say pandemic everyone will look at uh, the covid 19 when covid 19 came some of those words that we are not so common uh, like quarantine our uh, protocols uh, pandemic others became uh, West that we use uh, routinely. Quickly, now let's uh, get set to join uh, Dr. Uh, Sadiq Abdurrahman, uh, Acting Director, uh, Pub FCT Public Health Department, under the Health and Human Services Secretariat of the Federal Capital Territory Administration. Now, uh, we'll be starting off very quickly uh, with uh, uh, taking some questions here and asking him uh, what is the state like, particularly the issue that involves uh, to water in the FCT because most time when cholera is mentioned it has to do somewhat with water and all of that here uh, how safe is the water in parts of the FCT you look at areas like Mpape some areas along the airport road where you have settlements like uh, Piwe uh, settlements like uh, Edo settlements like uh, how do you call it now uh, Kuchinguru uh, Piakasa and all of that here can you tell us quickly uh, Dr. Abraman here what you are doing and how safe are those waters we have more than 16 states in the country plus the FCT that are already witnessing the outbreak. Uh, here in FCT we have uh, started with seeing individuals coming in or reporting people with um, symptoms of gastroenteritis, diarrhea and vomiting, uh, early May. And towards the <coughs> part of early part of June, we, we swung into action uh, um, and we, we, a series of tests were done among those that were re reported to the facilities and we discover that this is a cholera outbreak based on the evidences we had. And immediately, uh, emergency operation center for the response, a cholera response was constituted with seven pillars uh, in the Department of Public Health. And this constitute is co made up with um, uh, multisectorial stakeholders. In cholera outbreak is a seasonal thing, and is a factor of uh, so many things coming to play. For example, uh, it's a factor of poor environmental sanitation, personal hygiene issue of lack of access to potable drinking water and <clears throat> above all our culture in this part of the environment in this part of the world where people open defecate and uh, the disease itself it is 
uh, fecal oral, meaning contamination of either the food or water uh, and then is eaten. It has is not likely to be transmitted from individuals to individual. Uh, however, if uh, there is a sick person uh, and vomits and defecates and contaminates the environment around and that the next susceptible person can also get it by inadvertently touching or eat, you know, or fly picking and dumping on the food that is left open. Uh, is intertwined? I would say yes, um, because it's, it, it, they all move, go together. Uh, water is life, water is key to survival, uh, most especially having uh, portable drinking water. Um, we are aware it's in FCT here, the FCT Water Board and uh, Rural Water uh, Supply Agency, RUASA, there are this, the agencies that are mandate, mandatorily or statutorily responsible for the supply of water. And uh, looking at the current situation in the country and the FCT uh, as it were, uh, the state capital, there are issues around insecurity, uh, around urban rural urban migration around uh, e economy and so on and then coped with the recent pandemic of COVID-19 which came with a lot of uh, crisis. So people, there is, you know, trooping in created a lot of slums, increasing pressure and demand on the infrastructure uh, and the water itself. So. Uh, Obviously, there is a, a serious uh, inadequate uh, water supply across uh, the, the, the FCT. And most of these outbreaks uh, we have witnessed so far across the Sixth Area Council is um, we mapped out the community. Uh, virtually, almost all the Sixth Area Council have reported uh, some cases. And uh, out of these cases, we, we have about 34 wards the out of these two political wards that are affected and uh, as we speak we have up to uh, 894 uh, that are already um, available to us and then uh, about 66 deaths so uh, obviously this created a lot of uh, pressure and inadequacy in the services not just water, but even the health service itself on, and putting a lot of pressure on the available uh, resources. That's, that's a very good question. Um, like I said earlier at the onset, we, it, we, we kick-started the process by the directive of uh, the Honorable Secretary, Health uh, and Human Services Secretary, Dr. Mohamed Kau, uh, who led the team and gave the first uh, press briefing uh, alongside the SA to media on to the Honorable Minister. And we crisscrossed the six area councils, uh, paid them advocacy to all the leadership uh, of the area councils alongside the traditional rulers, the gatekeepers, the religious rulers, and so on. And this culminated in also activating our EOC, uh, the Emergency Response uh, cholera Response Center in the public health uh, with seven pillars, like I said, and these pillars include case management, surveillance, infection prevention, control. Uh, most importantly is one to address the question you raised is on the effect on, on sensitization of the general public, um, which we call risk communication and community engagement. Uh, this risk communication community engagement has three teams. Uh, we structured it into three teams, and in e team A, B, C, in each of these teams, we, we are not uh, unaware of the need to have a broad-based um, uh, collaboration and synergy uh, with the relevant agencies like FCT, Waterboro, Rwasa, APB, uh, our, our development partner, NCDC, and WHO. Uh, we did a targeted sensitization to all this community uh, using uh, open uh, broadcast vans with uh, airing of jingles that were developed in all the key languages, including Pidgin English. So this team have been going out and they have been uh, also given a, a mandate of not just going to sensitize these communities, uh, but also educating them 
on the need to understand the disease, on the need, uh, identifying their water source, picking sample from this water source. If patient is available at the point of visit, they pick samples for analysis. Uh, that is what also gave us the informed decision on uh, modifying the policy and our approach. Uh, the, what, uh, several water samples have been taken, is undergoing analysis now at the FCT Water Bowl Laboratory as well as NAVDAC. Some have been sent to give us a clear picture on the type of water we are consuming. Uh, the other aspect is on the sam stool samples that we have collected. The stool samples, the preliminary analysis using rapid diagnostic RDT uh, revealed uh, cholera, vibrio cholera uh, subtype. O1. We usually we have two types, subtype O1 and subtype O139. The one we are having currently causing the outbreak is subtype O1, and this is the one we have. However, the other laboratory evidences are, um, are, are still coming out. We sent some to NCDC National Re Reference Laboratory and some other high-tech laboratory to give us a clearer picture to do culture uh, and sensitivity to give us a pattern and the type of uh, the, the germs, not just the cholera, but other related um, diseases, uh, bacteria that can cause similar diseases like shigellosis, helicobacter pylori, and so on. That will help also uh, in change the pattern and the drug of choice of treat managing these cases. So basically, this is ongoing, and this is part of uh, what we are doing, uh, which you have you are also uh, a key stakeholder helping us to give back the correct information, especially on prevention. Because cholera is seasonal, it's a disease that is treatable and preventable. It is disease that is intertwined to issues around the, like I said, the culture of open defecation, poor environmental hygiene, personal hygiene, and lack of potable water. Absolutely. Um, like I said the, at the initial discussion, the FCT Water Board, which has that mandate, and the Rural Water Supply Agency, RUASA, uh, into the rural community uh, on, on top of it, they are doing a lot. However, need more need to be done. Um, and at the moment, as an interim measure, uh, they are already going out with water tankers to the targeted affected community. Because you cannot deny them access to their water uh, for uh, domestic uses without providing alternative. So, okay, uh, uh, Dr. Raman, we, we want to know uh, from your own uh, standpoint clearly here what are you doing in the area of advocacy? That's the area of keeping the people properly enlightened, particularly involved uh, radio, TV, and several other uh, means to reach the people and ensure that they are adequately informed, particularly on issues of getting them heavily uh, sensitized here. And what was I talking about? But can you also tell us, uh, Dr. Adraman, uh, some of the red spots uh, when it comes to the issue of a uh, cholera outbreak in the city? The number you gave is indeed very alarming here. Can we know some of the hot spots uh, in the city as well as some other possible causes outside the issue of uh, open defecation and problem related with uh, lack of pipe on waters? It's uh, happening, but it's not adequate enough. Um, because it is not a, the, this disease affects mo mostly the downtrodden, like I said, and in urban, uh, urban slums, in rural community, in hard to reach. Most of them don't even have the luxury of television. Uh, so um, that's why, that's informed, that's, that is the reason why after our mapping, it changed our decision to in, step up and do massive publicity in radio. Uh, yeah, alongside the ongoing routine of flyers, television, and so on. And then the use of the uh, outdoor uh, broadcasting van in, as we go out to these targeted communities. This is to, again, uh, step up the sensitization in local languages, in jingles, and so on. Yeah, the actions are, are clearly uh, yielding results. Um, um, you, you may wish to note that we we are not just on the issue of sensitization alone, you know, not just about the issue of uh, providing access to interim measure to mitigate, to access to water to mitigate the, the disease. Uh, also on the treatment side, uh, 
you may wish to know that we we have prepositioned drugs across all the public health facility and some uh, primary health care facilities uh, and the key treatment here is IV fluid replacement and some selected antibiotics as well as also ORS, the oral rehydration therapy, which um, this team, when they go out, they, they don't just go in to sensitize or take sample, they also do some practical demonstrations. Um, remember, I said these are downtrodden, they also uh, practice in preparing the salt sugar solutions with the local available uh, resources. Uh, of their common salts in at home, the sugar, and then the available water by teaching them how to boil uh, the water, water source, and filter it. Response we have uh, in in Amakia, uh, Kabusa, Waru, Guagua, Jiwa, uh, and, uh, Jai, and so on. Then going to Buari side, we have uh, Kubwa, we have Day Day, all Day Day, all New Day Day. Uh, and then in Guagualada we have Zuba, we have the Guagualada Central, uh, and so on and so forth. So um, this, uh, like I said, is a targeted uh, type of approach we are doing now. As and when we speak, the, our team yesterday they have gone to Guagualada Access. The, today they are also going to uh, uh, Kuali Access uh, because they are guided by this mapping. Uh, of the high burden uh, community and wards. Yeah, the good thing about cholera outbreak is not like a other infectious disease outbreak um, because the the culprits are known. Uh, so that is why the emphasis is more on prevention. It is targeted. Uh, it's uh, intertwined around access to where these people get their drinking water, their practices of uh, you may agree with me that because of our culture and other factors, they open difficulty. Even in the city center, you be I can give you specific areas. You go to Mabushi, Axinia, the Federal Ministry of Works. Uh, the fly over there with the drainage in the daylight. You see people squatting and open difficulty. It's an okay. I, I, I thank you, Doctor Abdurrahman. Uh, if you talk about the fact that the uh, open defecation is something going on. Are there a culprit? Have anybody been arrested, particularly by the Abuja Environmental Protection Board or any of the enforcement officers uh, within the Federal Capital Territory Administration? That's what we'll be asking you, uh, Dr. Abdurrahman. Also, uh, like what you mentioned about being culture, how do you change that perception here when people believe very strongly that open defecation is their culture, or some of us who even grew up in rural communities uh, see open defecation as something that you do uh, that is more comfortable. When you go, you get more ventilated, you are not kept in an enclosed area, you just found the wind, everything passing through you, while you actually uh, may just be there uh, dropping all of this. And are you taking this advocacy to school, Dr. Grama? That is why there is an, a, a synergy and a team approach to this problem. Uh, it, the Abuja Environmental Protection Board is involved, uh, the FCT Water Board is involved, the water is involved, um, the rural agency development, all this, you know, and so on, uh, is a teamwork uh, because it is not a straightforward type of approach to solve this problem. At the federal level, it's the same thing. It is seasonal uh, because, because the, the mechanism there, when this attitude or factors are already on ground and it 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 is it, it, it coincides periodically around uh, heavy downpour when rain when the rain is, rain is coming at that at that period with the heavy downpour it washes all this waste to available surface water and other water that is being used by people and remember if including the food we hawk veggies roots, fruits, and so on. Even the sugar cane that they talk around, they may be tempted to use the available water and wash this and sell it in people, to the public. These are, the, that, these are some of the things, because it, like I say, it's fecal oral. It's not infectious by person-to-person -person transmission. So this is why it coincides always with the season. And that also guides us 
on putting in, in place this measure to prevent occurrence. And most importantly, um, there was a survey conducted by the World Health Organization across the, the entire country. The FCT was placed among the low risk states. Uh, however, because of the earlier reasons I told you, the insecurity, the economic insecurity, the, the, and so on, there is high influx, uh, urban, urban, rural, urban mi migration. If you go to most of the proliferating slums in the FCT, you see it's being used as a dormitory for a daily earned individual that don't even have uh, abroad. They are here just for, uh, to earn a living and to get a secure place to live. Now and this constitutes this type of threat of open defecation and putting us at risk of getting this. So as at the moment, where WHO is also aware of that, the, 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 the consignment of even the, it has a vaccine, oral type vaccine of Vibrio cholera. This is, is being considered for FCT now. We had, at the initial stage, uh, did a lot of advocacy across all the SDS in the FCT. Um, I, I, I maybe I, I mentioned maybe I did not mention because uh, it it took us almost one or two weeks to ensure that all we we were attempting to do was to get the buy-in of the SDAs of the area councils. Remember, um, even the schools is is a different level, and we have public and private and. LE, uh, LEAs are under the structural responsibilities of area councils. Secondary school at the FCT level so is intertwined and all of these uh, key stakeholders are brought in on board and they are very much aware. We are aware, um, we, we are already with the, uh, the pandemic, the global pandemic, we've gone into first and second wave of the COVID-19 and we are started witnessing and uh, seeing and witnessing uh, a third wave, if you like, of the new variant, the, the Delta variant in other countries, notably India, uh, Brazil, Turkey, and of recent South Africa and some other parts of, uh, and we have also gotten an index case in Lagos. So um, here in FCT, of course, the activity is still up. We are still active. Uh, even our treatment center are still open. Two are still open out of the seven we have. These two are this day do, and the EDU treatment center, isolation center. The this day do as we speak, we have about three cases on admission and two in Guagala the teaching hospital. area they we all understand that very clearly the numbers appear to have increased that somewhat although in some of the days we find no figure most days we'll find three four figure which is also very very worrisome uh, what is the fcta doing to cop the spread and the issue of the vaccine and the issue of the vaccine uh where does it likely come in with people have uh, been vaccinated here the question will be asking do they stand the chance of not being infected at all or being infected? There's so much talk across the board, across the globe, about the issue of some persons being vaccinated and still getting infected. Uh, what would be your explanation here? And by way of confusion, uh, what will you be telling the people concerning uh, COVID-19 and the Delta uh, variant, uh, and COVID-19 Delta variant and the issue of cholera? What will you be telling them? Prevention, prevention, prevention is key. It is still bent down on what we've been doing uh, and it's ongoing and we must sustain it. One, uh, at government level, government is able to provide all this infrastructure, human resource and capacity building and networking and synergizing with uh, partners and also ensuring that commodities especially the PPE are still uh, having huge stocks. Uh, however, um, everybody, individual, public must take responsibility. Uh, it is, it is a, a pandemic. It is, the disease is, is, is a, a, uh, droplets. It can move from person to person and also through formats. So 
very important. So we, and the new variant, the Delta variant, is more transmissible and more infectious than the COVID-19 SARS-CoV-2 itself. So uh, the issues around one, we need to sustain issue of using non uh, non cuticle measures uh, of uh, use of face masks or nose masks, social distancing, the issue of uh, washing of hands regularly with soap, in advantage you don't have access to that, you need to use the hand sanitizer. Very important, especially in congregate settings, we have to reduce as much as possible. Still, especially in our uh, congregational religious sites, markets, stalls, restaurants, we should be aware and still maintain the 50% uh, capacity. Uh, the other aspect, government have ramped up uh, access to treatment, uh, diagnosis, and especially uh, now that we come to term, this disease have come to stay with us. We have to institutionalize the services and make it accessible, available and accessible to people. It's on issue of that, we, the key thing is diagnosis, is di diagnosis. So FCT at its own level, before now, we were relying on National Reference Regulatory of the NCDC. We, we have one which is under the FCT. Now, the PCR is at the Kubo General Hospital and is for free for individuals with symptoms. Rap rapid diagnostic test has been also uh, started in seven centers, uh, courtesy of NCDC, as also training is ongoing to expand it to 17 across the board, including institutions, schools, and so on, so that people that have the symptom can go and know their status. Early diagnosis goes a long way. Uh, as in regards to those uh, countries that are red zones, there's a travel protocol which is ongoing fortnightly being reviewed by the Presidential Steering Committee, the Federal Minister of Health, Post Health, as well as FCT Administration, Health and Human Services Secretariat, and Every traveler coming from these red zones, when there is no option, they are strict quarantine in government approved uh, quarantine places, uh, categorized differently, and they are tested at the second day of arrival and seventh day. Those that turn up positive are taken straight to the treatment center. There is no option. And with the positive cases are sequenced undergo genomic sequencing uh, so that we are, we, we are sure, double sure, is we are not dealing with the Delta variant. Vaccine uh, is very important, it's key, is a key component. We are aware, we, we have had the first phase. F many people took their first and second doses. The, the first phase uh, was, if you like, targeted a type of vaccination for the front line, including you and me, your front line. Uh, paramilitary, military, and so on, uh, and people in the highly placed leaderships. Um, but now, uh, globally, is the approach is to get the hard, hard immunity. The hard immunity, you cannot achieve it until you get 70 to 80% of your total population vaccinated. We are in a few weeks' time, maybe two to three weeks' time, get, uh, expecting more than 4 million doses coming uh, with courtesy of UK government and COVAX to Nigeria, about 4.7 of that. And that will go a long way of doing, uh, give, providing access to all the eligible uh, population in the country to have uh, this vaccination done. And remember, this vaccination is it, uh, this disease is, is a novel and it's evolving. This vaccination can confer protection to the individual that had full vaccination to not to have a severe disease. Does not prevent him or her from getting exposed and catching the disease. And you can still transmit to those that are not vaccinated. And that's the essence why all of us must get vaccinated so that it reduces the risk and naturally build up the herd immunity and also um, help us to bring the, the scourge to, to an end. And any, this is a global phenomenon. Any uh, country must work towards that, and that is where we are.
Thank you very much. For, by conclusion, uh, cholera outbreak is with us, it's seasonal. The good thing, it is preventable and treatable. We know the culprit is a multifaceted emphasis is on prevention. One, people must learn to avoid contaminated water, drink potable water, and if you must drink any water, boil it and then filter it. Um, secondly, all our food must be cooked properly before eating. Hand washing, hand washing, hand washing is very key. Before and after toilet, before and after eating, of to before and after touching any of our loved ones that are infected or visiting persons that are sick we, uh, we, we down with the cholera. And most importantly, we must also listen to uh, the directives uh, of the government on the, the disease. And again, any sick person should please, as much as possible, go as quickly to any of the nearest health facilities. We have prepositioned commodities uh, because cholera kills very fast. It doesn't give you a chance to live long like the COVID. And so you don't delay. Once there's symptoms of diarrhea vomiting, we start immediately with oral salt rehydration therapy or salt sugar solution, which is almost readily available at home. Then we quickly uh, rush the hospital. As for COVID-19, again, it's very important. We, we need to maintain our both non-pharmaceutical and social distance measures and also do try to access testing. We have all this available now if you have the symptoms so that we can know whether you, it is a common flu or COVID-19. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sadiq Abdurrahman, Director, Acting Director of a public health department of the health and human services secretariat of the federal <coughs> capital territory administration thank you very much for that incisive touch on uh, the outbreak of cholera in the fct towards the end you touched on the issue of the data uh, variant let's hope that persons will be properly sensitized to stop open defecation as well as go for vaccination and comply with the health uh, protocols we thank you very much dr sadiq on that note we'll take a break when we <coughs> turn from the break we would be looking at politics here, how it affects the ruling party, the APC, and what they may just be planning ahead of our next two years' presidential poll after this break.